Hello space engineers. In this video I'll be talking to you about Phil's Ship Diagnostics, a script that I recently released to the Steam workshop for space engineers. I'm going to start off by talking about how you need to set everything up to work with this script and get basic, basic functionality going, and then I'll follow up with some discussion of the advanced features and some of the tweaks that you can do to the system beyond just running the vanilla script. I've already created the basic setup as far as blocks are concerned. You're going to need at least one timer block, one programming block, and one LCD display. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that everything in the ship is under your ownership. So go into your terminal, hit Control A on all the blocks, and transfer the ownership to me. In this example, I'm going to change the names of my programming block and my timer block to make them easier to find. This is not necessary for the functioning of the script. Once you have all your blocks set up, the first thing that you're going to want to do is set up your timer block to continue continuously trigger the programming block. From your timer block in the terminal, go to Setup Actions, find the timer block, and put it into slot number 2 as Trigger Now. Then, find the programming block and put it into slot 1 as Run. When it asks you to input an argument, do not put any arguments. Just hit OK. Once you have your timer block set up, you can set up the script. Go to your programming block and hit Edit. Then select Fill Ship Diagnostics from the Browse Workshop button. Load it in. Hit Check Code. Once the compilation is successful, hit OK. And then hit Remember and Exit. The third thing we'll need to set up is the LCD panel. You can also use a regular text display or a wide LCD panel. The first thing you want to do is to go into the terminal on the LCD panel, scroll down, and make sure Show Text on Screen is set to Public. This is going to let you see the ships once they're rendered. Note the Font Size property just below. We'll need to change that later. The final part, and the most important part of the LCD panel setup, is to make sure that it has a valid name. By default, the script looks for screens that start with the name Screen underscore Diagnostic underscore. For the most basic setup, let's name this screen screen underscore diagnostic underscore main. That will make this our main display which we can control later. This is recommended for a single display setup. Once your timer block, programming block, and LCD panel are set up correctly, you can go into the timer block and hit trigger now. What this will do is start the script into action. The script will initialize for the first few seconds and depending on how large your ship is, this could have a significant impact on performance. This should only last for about 5 seconds. For smaller ships, it will be nearly instantaneous. Then, when the automated initialization process is completed, you should see something come up on your display. At first, you may not be able to see everything on your ship. What you'll need to do is to go into the LCD screen and change the font size so that it fits appropriately. The font size does not have very good granularity at the smaller end, so for very large ships you might find it hard to get a very good fit. Once the LCD screen is set up and the program is running, you should have a functional display. Now I will discuss some of the tweaks that we can make to the system in order to make it more customized to our needs. Most of the customization that you can do involves changing the name of the LCD panel. Go into the LCD panel screen and change the name from Screen Diagnostic Main to screen underscore diagnostic underscore zero underscore one. What this means is that we're setting the LCD block to display angle zero, there are six different angles in this script, and display mode one. Display mode one is flat mode. Display mode zero is the scanning mode that we saw at first. You may name any number of LCD blocks any combination of zero through six for the first number, and 0 or 1 for the second number to customize what you're showing where. Additionally, you can add an underscore H to the end of the name in order to add a second display horizontally on the same screen. In this particular example, it might look like we have two of the same rendered image, but we're working with a space station that looks the same from two different angles. If you had a more asymmetrical ship, the difference would be more noticeable. All of the same rules apply but this time, changing any of the other numbers changes the combination of angles that are displayed on the screen. If instead of an H, we put a V at the end of the name of the LCD screen, it will show the second view 
below the first view as opposed to next to it. Putting an HV at the end of the name will do both. It will have one view to the right, one view below, and then one view to the lower right. These naming conventions also apply to screen underscore diagnostic underscore main. You can put an underscore H, underscore V, or underscore HV to tile the main display. The main display is special uh, because it, we are able to change it with inputs from our control panel. If we go into our button panel, or any control panel, and hit set up actions, what we can do is we can send certain arguments to this programming block to change how the main display looks on the fly. First, we'll drag the programming block down to the first button slot and hit run. And when it asks for an argument, we're going to put in rotate. What this will do is rotate the image that's on the screen or change the combination of images that are on the screen in the case of multiple displays on the same screen. In button slot 2, we're going to run the programming block with the argument mode, M-O-D-E. What that will do is it will change the type of display uh, that is up on the screen. So it won't change the angle at all, but it will switch between scanning mode and flat mode. Again, this is on the main display only. Finally, there are some customizations that are available in the code itself. These customizations are for more technical users, but casual users may experiment as well. Unfortunately, we don't have time to cover them in this video, um, but you can definitely look at the code itself for some documentation, uh, or you can send me a message, and I'd be happy to talk to you about any of the tweaks uh, that you can make to affect the performance of the script, the look of the script, or the interaction with uh, other scripts. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed the script, uh, have some feedback, have a question, or would just like to say hi, feel free to reach out. But that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching.